Uh, we're joined now, though, speaking of the mayor, at the GBH booth by Reverend Mariama White Hammond, Boston's Chief of Environment, Energy, and Open Space. Reverend, it's great to see you. Welcome. It's good to be here. Yeah, so we're really excited to talk to you because I think environmental justice is something we hadn't heard about much until very recently. So explain to people what that what that means, what that means for Boston, what that means are all around the country. Yeah, so you know the environmental justice movement really has been around quite a while. Uh, started in mostly in the American South. A lot of folks looking at this question of who bears the burdens when there's pollution, when there's those sort of negative impacts on communities. And then the other side of the question is, who gets the benefits, right? Who gets the open space? Who gets the beautiful streams and the clean water? And environmental justice is really lifting up the reality that, unfortunately, there are many communities where, and particularly black communities and communities of color, where they don't get any of the benefits. They're not getting the tree canopy. They're not getting the parks. They're not getting those powerful, important things that are helpful. And they're being asked to bear the burdens. They're getting the pollution, the ash pollution, the air pollution, all of these negative impacts. And so environmental justice just says that we need equity. You shouldn't have some people getting all the benefits and other people getting all the burdens. Does the average person get how climate change has exacerbated these racial inequalities that are going to be the focus of a lot of the next week here? You know, I've been working on this issue about 10 years now, and uh, I think early on, maybe not everybody did get it, but we are here in July 2023, the hottest month on record ever in 120,000 yeah. yeah. years. And I think people are getting it. <laughs> people are really getting it now. What are you doing in the city? To deal to address these inequalities, these inequities. Well, okay. First of all, we've made sure that we're paying attention to what are the current state of affairs. So last year we released a heat report where we use drones and a variety of different um, data techniques to really map what are the hard, hottest places in our city. And unfortunately, when you take the hottest places in the city and you put that on top of the places where redlining occurred in our city, they're almost a one-to-one -one match. And so really telling the truth about the fact that this climate change, yes, is happening everywhere, but it's not affecting everybody equally. Some people are paying the price far more for the climate impacts, and we need to be honest about that. Because then there's the next step, which is, now that we know where the problem is worse, that is where the majority of the resources need to go. And so we've expanded our tree division. Mayor, we put money in the budget to take us from three staff people to 16. Mm. Uh, and our heavy focus is on how do we increase canopy in those neighborhoods where in the past we didn't put trees. And in the past we put a lot of concrete. And in the past we made decisions that made it hotter for people. And also looking at things like how do we help people get air conditioning? How, how do we do the things both that lower the temperature in the neighborhood and that help people in their homes to survive? That's the voice of Reverend Mariama White Hammond. You know, I, I remember we were talking a, a while ago that it, because there were all these huge trees along Melanie Cass Boulevard, huge, big, mm -hmm. mature trees, as they call mm -hmm. them. And there have been these plans made like 10, 15 years ago to just get rid of them mm -hmm. uh, for uh, wider sidewalks, bike lanes, all that kind of stuff. You used to yell at Marty Walsh on the radio every well, month, don't you because, remember? Because, you know, when I say when I say people hadn't heard that much about environmental justice or in terms of, of redlining and stuff, it didn't seem to occur to these people that this was a bad idea to get rid of all these mature trees because you put up these little teeny tiny trees, we'll all be six feet under before they get big enough to make a difference. And then people stopped it. Mm. But that was a weird thing. Yeah, I think the reality is that people have often not valued nature. I yeah. mean, that's why we're in the situation we're in with climate change, because we think we can pave over everything, and sometimes our mentality has been progress is bigger, better, this, you're gonna develop this, that, and the other. And, and the reality is, nature has been around since the very beginning, and it has a very <laughs> important role to play, and everybody has a right to connect with nature. It's not just for heat. It's good for our mental health. Yeah. It's, it cleans our air. It has pro prospects and, and properties you can't manufacture. And I don't think we've appreciated that enough. Reverend, in the last minute we have, is the NAAC, I mean, there, we talked to Michael Curry before, just to touched on some of the resolutions and business of the convention. Is the convention addressing these issues that you care about? 
Yeah, so this has been a part of the convention, I think, for at least the last four cycles. And um, what's been amazing is uh, I've, I've been able to meet with folks. I, last year we went as Boston was sort of taking the baton from Atlantic City, got to um, connect with some folks there. Uh, I'll be on a panel tomorrow where we're talking about these exact same issues with myself, but other leaders in this conversation. So yeah, this, you're right. Ten years ago, I think people were a little fuzzy on it. They thought it wasn't as important as, as many other issues. But now I think people are really seeing, seeing the connections, and particularly post-Hurricane Katrina. I think for me yeah, and many point. of us, that was a wake-up call for how climate change is a threat multiplier. It takes everything we care about and makes it even worse. And so we can't afford to ignore it. Thanks for your time and thanks for your work. We really appreciate it. It's great to see you. It's good yeah, to be thank here. You, thank you so much for being here. We've been